Hi guys, if you recall, previously I talked about how to fly a piece of paper, or how to make a twist, or how to create such an animation using the CC page turn effect. However, in this video, I'll be talking about how to create a turning animation for paper which is very popular and is used in many motion graphic clips. You might know that creating these animations usually requires taking it step by step, frame by frame. But in this video, I'll show you a method to achieve the same results without the process of frame by frame animation. And the benefit of this technique is that in the end, you can change the paper design without having to repeat this entire process. And if you're interested in learning motion graphics fundamentally and step by step, I can't stop recommending the Motion Hero Masterclass. And if you're eager to stay updated on the latest motion graphics tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button, this way YouTube will recommend you similar videos not only from my channel, but also from other creators in the field. Ok, without further ado, let's get right into it. To make the timeline less crowded, I shine the layers that I don't need so they won't be in the timeline. This is the layer or the paper that I want to animate. And this will be its backside. Alright, the first thing that I need to do is duplicate this layer. The first layer will be used as a reference. I like it so it's not selected. I select the second layer and I hit Ctrl Shift C so I put it in a new comp. I name it Front Page Comp and hit OK. I open the comp and here I want to change the settings of the comp. I hit Ctrl K and I want to have a wide composition. For that I change its width to 6000 and set the height to 1000. Then I place the layer here for now. I head back to the start comp, and after that I have to slice the comp into 30 equal pieces horizontally. To do this better and easier, I use the RD Slicer script, which is absolutely free, and you can download it using the link in the description below. I set this to 1, and this one to 30, and I uncheck these options, then hit the slice button, so the comp would be sliced into 30 pieces horizontally. Alright, this is the original layer. I don't need it anymore, so I delete it. I select all the layers and make them 3D. And then I use the motion tools script and place their anchor points to their left. After that, I select the last layer and I parent it to the previous layer. I keep doing this and parent each layer to its previous one so that when each layer moved, its next layers would move as well. Only the first layer doesn't need to be parented to any. After that, I select the very last layer and open its rotation. And now I have to parent the Y rotation of this layer to the Y rotation of the previous one. For that, I use the pick web and parent it to the Y rotation of the previous layer. So when the Y rotation of each layer changes, the next layer rotates and moves as well. And to copy and paste the expression that I use on this layer for the other layers and not to do it individually, I come here and instead of the name of the layer, I type index, which stands for the order of the layers. And for parenting each layer to the previous one, I add minus 1 to that. Which basically means, for example, layer 32 minus 1 is layer 31. And the Y rotation of this layer is parented to the Y rotation of the previous layer. And at the end of the expression, I add a plus and type value. So aside from the Y rotation of each layer following the Y rotation of the previous layer, I can change itself individually too. After that, I right click on the Y rotation and hit copy expression only. And then I select the other layers and search their Y rotations. Then I select them all and hit Ctrl V so the expression would be added to the Y rotation of the other layers as well. 
The only exception is the first layer which doesn't need this expression. So I deselect it and hit Ctrl V. I close all the layers and as you can see, if I rotate the Y rotation of the first layer, all the layers would be rotated simultaneously and a circular form would be created. Let me undo the changes. I place this layer here. A little bit over here. I want to decrease the scale, so I only decrease the scale of the first layer and set it to 70. I move it to the right a bit. To see the comp even better, I open the front comp and I create a solid here. And I change its color to red. I open its opacity and set it to 10. Let's get back to the main comp so I can see it better. I want to rotate it from this piece and I want the layer to rotate forward. To understand what I'm saying better, first I enable the two views. The left view would be for the active camera and the right view would be for the top. Then I select this layer which is outside of the screen of the laptop. And then I rotate it so it would be curved completely and enter the scene. As you can see, something like this would be made. Alright, to make the value around, I set it to 20. I move it to the left a bit so where the comb is curved would fall in the scene. And then I come here and select this layer and I want to make it straight from this point on. I open its rotation. Here its rotation is 20, so I set it to minus 20 so the comb would be straight from this point on. Then I open the comp and hide the background. I head back to the start comp and let me change the views to one view. I come here and lock this composition from here. And then I head back to the front page comp. And now I want to match it with the reference. To do that, first I increase the scale of the layer and set it to 150. It's too much, 140. The layer itself should go up a bit. I go back to the front page comp and I increase its scale a bit, 143. I correct its position too and move it to the right so it would be exactly at the center of the monitor. Looks good right here. I create a keyframe for it here. After 10 frames, I create another keyframe. Again 25 frames ahead, I create another keyframe. In the beginning, it looks good. 10 frames ahead, I move it to the left a bit for the anticipation action. Then right here, I move it to the right so the layer goes around completely and it would come in front and center. Looks good, it's almost at the center. Then I make these first two keyframes easy and I increase the influence of this keyframe a bit. I set it to 70 as well as this one. Let's give it a shot and see how it looks. It's good. To have the animation kind of bounce a bit when it stops, I go to the front comp, I hold alt and click on the position and I add the bounce expression to it. And I've added the bounce expression in the comment section below. Let's check it out. Alright, the bounce is a little bit too much. I decrease its frequency a bit. I set it to a half. Looks much better. I head back to the main comp and let's see how it turned out. Once that's done, let's work on the back side of the paper. To do that, first I go to the top view. And almost from this point on, the back of the paper is shown. So I select this layer, which is layer 15. I change its label color so it would be obvious. I go back to the active camera. And here, I right click on the comb and on the reveal, I select the reveal layer source in the project. 
So the source of the comp would be selected in the project panel. After that, I duplicate this comp and I change its name. And then I select all these layers. I hold Alt and drag and drop it on these layers so the source of this comp would change. Now if I click on the layer name here, you can see that from this layer the names are back page and before that it's the front page and it's obvious that the source of these comps has changed. After that I cut the layer that's for the back of the paper and I head to the back page comp and paste it here. I unsolo it. I open the scale and position values. The scale of this one is 143, so I set the other one to the same value as well. And then I copy and paste the same animation for the position of the back layer. So the animation of the front and back page of the paper would be identical. Then I delete this layer. Let's check out the animation. As you can see, it's pretty obvious where the layer is cut. To fix this problem, I select all the layers and look up the word expansion. Then I select the mask expansion property in all the layers. And then I set them to 1. Now if I deselect them, as you can see, the cuts aren't obvious anymore. Okay, let's check it out one more time. There is a small issue right here and that's this piece belongs to the front page. So I select it and in the project panel, I select the front page comp as well and by holding alt and dragging onto the layer, I change the source of the comp. And then I come right here and change the colors again. So it would be obvious that the source of the comps changed from this point on. The next thing that I need to do is make the back page of the paper bigger, so the animation would have more depth. Okay, for doing so, I head over to the back page comp, and right here I increase its scale a bit and set it to 170. Let's see how it turns out. And to make the back page be exactly at the center of the comp, first I enable the title action save. And at the start of the animation, which is frame 10, I create a keyframe for the position of the first slice of the comp. I make it easy ease and I set its influence to 70. And at the end of the animation, I create another keyframe and move it down a bit so it would be exactly at the center of the comp. And I make it linear. Let's check out the animation. Let me unshade the layers. I don't need this layer anymore, so I delete it. To make my work stunning, I select the screen layer and I add an adjustment layer to the comp right here and I apply the camera lens blur effect to it. Right here, I create a keyframe for the blur radius. I hit the U button. And here, I create another keyframe and I go back to the first keyframe and set it to zero. So when the layer comes forward, the background becomes blurred. Let's check it out one more time. Another problem is that the layer is reversed. To fix that, I head back to the back page com and here I right click on the layer and under transform, I hit flip horizontal. And then if you take a look, you can see that the back page is right. Looks perfect. Just let me reveal the noise adjustment layer to give it a noisy effect. 
and if you like to add a similar noise effect to your work, I recommend watching this tutorial where I explain the process in depth. Well, our work is done. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share it with your best friends.